everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are thrilled to host another Zoom Artist Talk session with the talented Toronto-based artist Suzanne Collette. Um, Suzanne Collette is a graduate from the Cleveland Institute of Art, Ohio, USA, earning a BFA degree in printmaking with a minor in ceramics. Since 1993, she has run um, a full-time studio art practice in downtown Toronto. Public and private gallery exhibitions and commissioned work sustains her. Large-scale clay sculpture and printmaking has become the focus of her work. The clay works and hand-built of earthenware, paper clay, and multi-fired um, to, to achieve a complex patina of surfaces. Her work has been included in national and international collections and exhibitions. She received her letters from the IAC, International Academy of Ceramics, in 2007, and her RCA, Loyola Canadian Academy of Ceramics, in 2008. She is a member of Open Studio, printmaking studio for over 25 years. The artist talk will follow by a 20 minute question and answer period. We are pleased to be showing a great collection of Suzanne's ceramic artworks at Manchester Galleries in the Gestures and uh, Structures exhibition until, 28th, until July 28th. Um, well, Suzanne, I would like to invite you to start your talk and uh, please ask your questions in the group chat or in the question and answer section and we will get to your questions after Suzanne's talk. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Cal and, and Anakita for inviting me to present today with David Robinson and Sandra Lettingham. It's, uh, it's wonderful to have this positive experience coming out of the pandemic. And uh, well, this, I thought it would be nice to have a live presentation to bridge our distance here in BC. I'm, I'm here in my downtown Toronto studio where I've continued working throughout the past few months and several months and where my altered thoughts have changed, but in a positive sense, it's been a great gift of time to be here. I'll tell a little bit about myself in that, um, yes, I am a printmaking major in my last year of the Cleveland Institute of Art. I, I got into ceramics and uh, I was lucky to find the disciplines have um, created a living, both have, have created a living for me here. And I'm in my 27th year full time as studio practice. So for all the ways I've made a living of, of tile installations for fireplaces, uh, my aviary projects, sculptures, printmaking, I also um, have a community here every Tuesday where I have workshops. And this has been something I've um, become very important to me. And the people come that feed me not only financially and help provide a stability at the studio here, but it's really important for my spirit. And I can be having a difficult day with the clay and the kilns. And when Tuesday rolls around and the group comes in, it's just like fresh air and an exchange of ideas. And so I feel really proud of that community and it's really important to what happens here at the studio. So I'm aiming that for today, uh, I'll leaving that all behind and, and I'll just focus on the work um, that is at the Winchester Galleries of the Leyden and Racine series. And I'm aiming that this will be a, a bit of a behind the scenes of things that you may not have, get a chance to see when you go to a gallery. And I can also share the fascinating, um, endless wonder of ceramics and um, and it's a constant mystery to me always. So it really keeps me involved and engaged with the work. Uh, and I think that coming late to ceramics from printmaking was to, is a great advantage to me because it keeps me in a beginner's mind. But not to be avoided and a, a major question that artists are often asked and that is, where do your ideas come from? How did you ever come up with that? And my answer to that would be that everything counts. Ceramics and printmaking both have taught me that life comes in layers and that when you're working with clay, you're, you're, you're building color, it goes back into the kiln, it comes out of the kiln, you add more glaze, goes back in layer by layer and printmaking is the same. You're working on a, on a plate, goes into the acid, comes back out, you draw some more, you have to proof it through a press, comes back out. So it's very interesting that these ideas about layers have become central themes of my work. Earlier pieces would have layers in very even, consistent patterns, creating vessels, as though life could be contained in a vessel. They are often were pierced, but the, the layers I noticed were very, very even. 
but it started to occur to me as the series developed, and I think it takes about five years for an idea to come to culmination. And over that period of time, I noticed that life doesn't always come in even layers, nor by invitation or on time or as expected. And I started to work those ideas uh, as well into my work. So a seed like that, a seed about layers, combined with myself and the clay working together, I find that a lot of things then start to happen in the making. So, um, yeah, and, and as well that, that the layers are also disrupted and un uneven, and that is what I bring into the work um, right now that I'm currently doing. And also it's where do those layers come from? Where, what is the root? Where's the root of your ideas? And so the root has also become a very central motif uh, to my ideas, layers and roots. And with the clay and myself, then it's just a matter of really letting go and having trust in what you're doing in order for the idea to develop and come forward. So I really have to show up. I, I really have to be here for me in the making is when I'm discovering and putting that back into the work. So suddenly, then suddenly your interior world and your exterior world become visible. And it's like you're working in collaboration. And in that, there is a lot of freedom. And that's what keeps me interested in these materials and, and feeds my work. So from the, from the um, printmaking, I bring line to my work. And it, it comes in the form of nichrome wire. And this is the wire, the electrical wire that my kilns are built from. And for years, I used to pull these around a post to stretch them straight. And then one day at the shop, they said, Susan, why don't you just buy it straight? and get the gauge that you want. So I get a variety of gauges for how I need to, to manipulate the wire. So this is my line that comes into my work. Interestingly to me, I didn't draw on my ceramics or image transfer. I brought it in in, in a root feeling. And from the clay, I bring a blind embossing or a sculptural approach to printmaking. I don't think I would have ever blind embossed my prints as such without of having the experience of working with clay. So that's how those two feed my work. I want to show you a piece in progress, which is from the Leyden series that are at, is at the gallery right now. And you can see the, the, li the, the line work. This is a greenware piece. So it's still soft and hard and I'm able to keep continuing to add on to it. I have to keep it wrapped in plastic while I'm working so it doesn't dry out. And the wire is a very important substructure here. You can see it's, it's underneath the clay there. So I'm cutting pieces and building that in to form the story. So it's really about the a transformation of clay and about a regeneration, something coming out of nothing and movement coming forward. So it's other ideas involved here are about the inevitability of the life cycle and how we're really actually burdened with that. And so there's also an, a sense of self-containment and um, self, um, self-fulfillment really in, uh, within one piece. So when I'm glazing, I tend to add color at this stage so that then when the piece comes out of the kiln, I'm, I'm not uh, faced with a blank canvas, that it's integral, the color is integral to the body of the piece. And when I'm glazing, I'm not spraying or dipping um, or pouring. I'm actually, I'm painting on as a painter. So I have a, a painterly approach to the, the, the glaze work, which as well relates to my 2D work. But the painting is really like a blind painting because this will be my color, but not until it comes out of the kiln will I see the effects and the melt of the composition that I've made. So you're actually standing in my glazed kitchen here where I measure and weigh out different recipes to create different effects. This one, you can see the texture that I'm really interested in and the different colors according to what is over and under a glaze that goes into a piece. Yes, so I'm gonna focus in on two finished pieces here. Um, where's my picture? 
And here we have also from the Leiden series that is at the gallery, and this one is called Beacon. And you can see the movement, the rush of water, there's a wire substructure under there. And this one is Islet, which has the pinks and from darkness and heavy undercurrents, a, a, a fullness comes forward over the top. So it started out black, actually, this piece and layers of multi-firing through the kiln and brings forward the color. As I was preparing for this, I noticed that this print is not unlike some of these pieces. Let me go back. And then these pieces, they're not, these were not drawn for them, but these earlier print work. So you can see how I've, uh, one discipline feeds the other. Now I'll, I'll turn over here to another series that is at the gallery called the Racine series. In a similar effect, this one here on the left, this has actually been fired once already. You can hear it's been fired, but on top of that, I've added further layers of clay. So there's layering in order to build up a rich patina of surface, texture, and light passage that goes through it. These are built with um, a liquid clay that I beat down and use a very glamorous cake decorator to pipe out. I actually pipe right on the work and as well, I pipe earlier pieces and save them so that when I'm working, I have clay to work from. So you can see how it's been poured. It's been set and now it still stays workable in the, plas in the uh, plastic. So I'm not stopping and piping, I can keep a, a piece full building. This piece here is um, called Vernal. Um, this is a very large scale piece. You can see how it begins with a root form at the back. And the root, when I say that, <clears throat> I'm just building a root. And that is how these all start from both years. So, uh, further to finding things along the way when you're working with a piece, this one actually used to stand this way. You can see the board. It usually, it used to stand up this way, but I've tipped it forward in the second firing as I did for this one. And then I get that action and movement and something that I discover along the way. This is a good example of that. Under there is the, the wiring. This has been fired probably eight to 10 times to, to get the strength of green that I wanted. And uh, at the very end, I use some mother of pearling to, that's when I can back into control with the work and can do the sweetening and bring forward ideas that, that, are, that are there. So it's quite a layered process in both series of Leyden and of the Racine. So I'd like to take you further into my, invite you to my printmaking room and we'll carry along. I'll just stop at another piece here. Oh, and before I go. The partner to this piece, partner to the Racine piece that I showed you here is uh, was was at a five museum uh, tour. The sister piece is Verdant. It was um, in a five museum tour and it is now going to the permanent collection of Arizona State University Museums. So that was a, a lovely end to that exhibition called Paper Clay Illuminated, which I was a part of. So this is another uh, piece. I work on several pieces at one time so that ideas feed off of the other and not everything falls into one piece, all good or, or all bad. Or if I have another idea, I try not to hide it within a piece and begin a new one. So that creates, that helps to create a body, a body of work. You can see the wire placements. So I was working on it yesterday. This re reminds me where to continue and keep on going. But as well, I know this will change because I may have predetermined ideas about a piece, but I, I am in, in collaboration with it as well. And so this may change when I get back to it next week. So this is really a work area here. 
the work tables. I have some commission work that I'm working on here and another, another body of work. So this is my world. So this is the print studio. I can be very self-sufficient now because I have my own press. I purchased this press at the 20th anniversary of my business from Ed Bartram, renowned Canadian printmaker. And it's very special to have this equipment. I think of him whenever I use it. So this um, is very important to me. And I'd like to stop and take a look at the pieces from the Labyrinth and the Moray series. As I was talking about layers and where ideas come from, one series builds onto the next. And you can see the layers. These are a very body scale relationship, large scale pieces. And they are as well built in layers. And they have holes in them as well because there's just no way we can contain all the things that happen to us in our knowledge. And here you'll see that they're put together, the larger sections, with copper wire, which are cut from my copper printmaking plates. So an example of how, how pieces feed each other. This one is called the Moray series. There's an example at the Gardner Museum of Ceramic Art. And this labyrinth is at, there is one at the Musée de Beaux-Arts in Montreal. But I'd like to stop at another of the Racine series. This is another finished Racine, also available in the catalog at the Winchester Galleries. And you can see the root system at the back here, as I discussed how they all begin, and it was standing this way, and now it's tipped forward in the second firing. And you can come around, this piece was black and it is now white. I build from dark up to light to get depth. And it ends with the glistening uh, mother of pearl teardrops and, and water drops at the end. So, so now I think I'm going to just come over towards my printmaking table. I mean, this is where I do a lot of drawing. Excuse me, I'm going to close that light. <clears throat> Bit of glare there. And this is my drawing table. And I, I just want to talk uh, briefly that as I was mentioning that the ideas feed each other, but when I'm drawing, I often wonder how those connect because I don't draw for a sculpture. I might be drawing uh, the hotel room out the window, um, other related other things that I see and witness. And I think that I'm doing this because I'm preparing myself to be in the moment with the clay and to be present. So all of this just keeps my hand and eye connected. Uh, and I end up with a history this was a residency in France, drawings from when I was 25 or younger, pen and ink. And so all of this, all of this information comes into the work. So I'm standing here in my command central and it is um, my business that I run here and it's not a bad thing. It's an important part that allows it to all happen. And if I have a day where I'm not feeling like building or getting the wire out or mixing clay or making a glaze, I've got paperwork and other works to do so to keep the, the ball rolling. Uh, and it's a really important part to how I'm able to do all this full time. So I'd like to end with, with a bang of a, a, an interesting piece to me that I almost gave up on. and. It really marks a history. Uh, there's a really rich patina of color and it, I might have abandoned it and I'm glad I didn't and stuck with it. So I think that's the, the, the end message to, um, that, I, that, I, that I keep at the work and that everything counts and everything comes into the mix. So I, I will end there and ask if Anahita, if you have any questions um, at this point. Well, thank you, Suzanne. It was amazing. Thank you for uh, first for showing your studio and your works to us. And um, thank you for sharing your art making process with us. Um, it's absolutely amazing. We have a couple questions here already. Um, so the first question is, how has traveling influenced your work? Um, you mentioned you have traveled a lot, you do a lot of sketching. And um, how seeing all these cultures, different cultures and arts, different artworks, um, has influenced your work. 
That's a good question. Uh, yes, I, I meant to mention that I, China has been a great influence to me in development of my ideas. And I must say, I, I say I'm self-sufficient here. This is very much a comfort zone and to leave and to go to a residency, uh, it's, it's huge. It's, it's, it's hard to leave the studio. It's a little bit scary, but it's always wonderful. And whatever I see, it, it feeds me and it doesn't come out immediately. It comes out maybe a year or, or two later. It has to go through your filter. But those are opportunities for where I'm, I have all these drawing books and marking. So it is important to get out of your out of your box, get out of your comfort zone. Um, and it has influenced me greatly. Um, I've been invited to to Israel, to the Islamic Association of Israel, and and that was a whole interesting world about history and, and things I would have never received from here being in the studio. So it's really important for artists to reach out and get those experiences. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, another question is, how long does it take for each piece uh, for you to create from the beginning to the end? Uh, the larger scale pieces are about two months, actually, um, the, the slow building. Uh, it could be two months on something like this one, too. I started that at the beginning of the pandemic and just, just finished that recently. And so it's that, and it gels and kind of percolates while I'm working on another piece. So time time is very elastic here <laughs> um it, yeah for the for smaller series you know that's another thing i've learned that it doesn't have to be labored over to be good sometimes you can really nail something very quickly and sometimes an idea can come and within within two weeks if i can get that through the kiln and, and knowing when to stop of course so uh -huh. yeah so it's <sighs> great another commented question uh yes. from hillary uh, seeing the aviary pieces, I think, behind you in the first room, uh, or are they shadows, forms, um, intriguing? And also, how has the pandemic informed um, the current work and differ, perhaps, for you from pre-pandemic? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for that, too. I don't think that yet. I just kept working, and I had that, uh, that luxury to just keep I tried to stay um, disciplined to keep coming in, even though I could sleep in and okay, I did that too, but I, I tried to keep a disciplined order of coming here and, and build on that. So it allowed for that. Um, yeah, I think it will come later. I think those, it will come later into the work, the ideas from what this experience has been. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, uh, that was the aviary. That is um, an ongoing series. I've worked in three different editions. Um, and that, I enjoy that work as small scale. It's in porcelain, it's a different clay than this. I, this is paper clay, which I, I should have mentioned, and it's a 25% paper pulp into the clay body. So it gives it strength for large and complex forms like this. The, the aviary are porcelain, so you can have see-through wings, you can have things very fine, and it's very intimate scale, which was a great comfort actually to work on over the pandemic. Um, but that's a whole other, whole other story of that one. Right. Um, well, great. Thank you. And um, well, I'm just going to ask a question of myself. Um, and it's about your process. Um, how your process of creating your um, artwork evolved over the course of your career? Um, do you have any of your older works to show us or um, maybe an example? Oh, sure. Well, behind me in my archives here, I have um, a bit of a history of pieces that show the developments in between these two, this, the Racine that I've been working on, the Racine series and the Leyden series. So these are, um, this was when I first, yeah, started, I don't know if I can show you this easily, but where I first started doing wire and I would add I would, well, it's way in the back there, but I would add wire on until I figured out when the guy was cleaning the kiln that I could put the wire integral to the work. But yeah, I used to add it on at the beginning. And this is a maze, maze series. It might be hard to see, but there's a little bit, I save one piece from each uh, series. Uh, so there's a bit of a history. This large scale piece is from the Burlington Art Gallery. It was an installation in the, the garden there. They have an artist room across Canada every, year they put an installation in there. So yes, I do keep one. In fact, these are in my collection as well. So it's just one left of each one that I, that I keep. So 
Well, thank you for showing us those works. Um, yes. Great. Um, another comment uh, that was so informative and that you are really generously, freely uh, shared your process is wonderful. Um, thank you, Suzanne. And um, the next question is, as the work progresses, are, um, are, you, are you adding wet clay to already fired clay? Yes, that's how I, I get to get the strength of the, the clay first in order that then I can turn it. And that way light can pass through. And it, it also doesn't land. It is actually rolling and moving. Perhaps it was some of my history of my working like with dance and, I, and ballet that I, I really like that gestural quality. I love the title of the show, actually, Gestures and Structures. That's really, uh, yeah, the very evocative. Thing. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, uh, which artists have influenced your works? Are there any specific sculptors that you um, get your influences from? Um, um, I, I certainly connect with like Cy Twombly, um, who I really like his paintings and drawings as well. I've always loved Picasso because of his printmaking and he did ceramics and always followed that growing up as an early influence in my early career when you're looking at people that, and how you connect, that those were uh, two for sure. Right now, I, I, it seems to be music, uh, Chopin actually, um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Gould, listening to that um, and what that evokes for me is, has been very influential. Very interesting, yeah. Frankenthaler, I love her paintings and sense of yes. color and space and form. Mm -hmm. Even though my work isn't like that at all, I, I, I still get a great um, connection with that. Of course, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another comment and question. Um, I love how your art pieces have fronts and backs, especially the recent works. Is this something you got inspired from nature? Um, about the being front and back, um, you, you know, since they, um, they do, they have to be in the round as a sculpture. You have to consider mm -hmm. that that's the real thing. So it's three, three dimensional painting and it's in the round. Um, the nature often comes to me later. I'll be walking the nature and I'll say, hey, that looks like one of my pieces instead of the other way around. I don't see something and I think that looks interesting and then I want to make that, but it's often the other round, even recently with the pandemic and having so many more walks and nature and high park, I'm starting to see be more aware and in tune and trying to learn tree names now. And so, um, but I've always had a very organic um, movement. I think it's just the movement and yeah, that, that really has been my influence. Thank you. Um, next question is, when are you coming to Newfoundland? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a beautiful invitation. <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> Some of your <laughs> sketches picked up on the building in your environment. Does architecture inform you? Uh, yes, I think it's the power of it. I think I feel the power when you feel of a building, the your the, the scale of it, the, the the root of that. Maybe not the the details or the graphic quality of it. That it's more structured than my approach, but I, I do get a, a wonderful sense when you go into a church or, you know, a, a bridge. I find bridges are very interesting. And I and some of those images come into my drawing. I've done a series of bridge drawings uh, in my printmaking in, in, with my prints incorporated. Um, but that, yeah, that's a good thought about architecture. Yes, I, I do. They're, and they're doing so many exciting things with architecture now. Yeah. Great. Looking forward to seeing your new works. Um, you use very organic forms in your work and they seem to be standing on very fine edges on, on the top of the base. Um, how do you create balance in your work? Well, yeah, that's a good question because I actually don't want balance. I don't want balance and it doesn't have to function, but it also has to be safe too. So that, that can be a challenge actually. And uh, I, I meant to talk a little further about the bases and uh, different platforms to s take the piece out of this world into its own world. And sometimes that's a porcelain base or sometimes I make them with 
with plaster, as there's a one with the Winchester galleries, it's plaster forms. And then I, I etch them almost like a printmaking plate to get a patina. And so that helps to balance the artwork and, and take it out of the tabletop into its own environment. And so that is very important. And, I, and, it, and often can take months just to get the, the right base. That sounds crazy, but to, 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 to not take over the piece and to have the piece be strong, strengthened within its environment. So yeah, that, I guess through my bases and a color plays an important part of balance as well. Uh, it, it often evolves from one side to another and creates um, a heavy area or a lighter area with whites and, and patinas. So, but I, I'm actually not looking for balance because then it's become static. So I am looking at it to mm -hmm. be a little tilted because nothing's really right and even. Exactly, nothing's perfect, but it still has um, some balance to it. There is everything still works well together, but it's not symmetrical or um, yeah, yeah right, right. perfect. Thank you. Um, next question is: um, we, we have followed your work for many years. How has buyer impacted your printmaking? Um, pardon me. Why have I? Which? Uh, how has buyer? impacted your printmaking um oh that's interesting um mm. you know i just thought of something uh i used to show at prime gallery in toronto back in the 80s so it's quite some time ago and what i uh, at that point i took the prints hung from wires like they were pulled from a mm. sketchbook and it, they were pins on mm -hmm. the wall and i took wire and i made yeah i made coils and the prints hung down from that and so yeah they're always interacting right now currently i'm i'm doing straight straight paintings and uh on a search right now so to be announced mm -hmm. so yeah new prints are, are very straight drawing straight drawing fantastic um so if there are no more questions maybe i can ask my fine my final question okay. um as a bill established and experienced artists um what do you suggest to emerging artists who are interested in ceramic works wow uh in ceramics in, in particular i think that how you know it's hard to get that equipment and that material to have that on hand and uh if you can't take a class i think that um it's yeah, lot, lots of ideas for, for young artists that it's, um, it's a lifelong pursuit, you know, as, um, and that it builds and it, and it grows one, one by the next. I started with a kiln, maybe no, no bigger than this piece. Uh, I got a little tiny kiln and it was like $500 or you can get one used and I can plug it in so you don't need any extra special electricity and so that you have a small scale to, to try this, to start small. To get in, to get a feel for it, but um, yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's a it's a good life. <laughs> I, I, I recommend it. Well, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, are there any more questions um, from the audience? Thank you. Hey. Um, well, if there are no more questions, I would just would like to thank you, Suzanne, for. Uh, taking the time to putting together um, this great presentation and for showing us your studio and your artworks. Um, thank you everyone for attending our um, another session of our Zoom Artist Talks. Um, this exhibition, Gestures and Structures, will be on display until June to July 28th. Uh, and uh, as you know, this exhibition is a group show uh, of works by David Robinson, Suzanne Collette, and Sandra Lettingham. Uh, the gallery hours are uh, Tuesday to Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So please, if you live in Victoria, um, drop by to see the exhibition in person because it makes a total different experience for the viewer to see these, these works in person. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Suzanne. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you, Anna Gita. Thank you for hosting and thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye, thank you.